a statement of fact? <laughs> Pardon? Uh, because I, I, I read from, um, I mean, it was all over the, 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 the media, not just social media, but mainstream media and the electronic media. And I think that was the day he came here for screening. And he admitted that he didn't do, uh, he didn't participate in the NYC as provided for under the law. And that in his own judgment, he's uh, been a member of uh, House of Assembly in his state and now as a minister of the Federal Republic that these were enough sacrifices. Now for us as a party, we know that uh, NYC is a mandatory scheme. It is not something you, 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 may, you may elect to do or abstain from doing. And my understanding of the NYC Act is that no employer of labor is permitted to employ someone who is a graduate or that 30 and who did he obtain exemption for reasons speculated as provided for in the electoral in the in the NYC Act? So for us, not participating in NYC was uh, really serious moral issues as well as legal issues. And we, after I interviewed him, we were convinced that uh, for our party, and I have said this over and over, there are clear lessons we have to learn from some of the things that have happened to EPC. Uh, in the recent past, when people, you know, uh, anyway, <laughs> we, were, we were convinced that if he didn't do it, why is it that for us was a sufficient ground to, to disqualify him? And we had to find courage to do so, uh, or rather to refuse to clear him. Now, for the Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, we have issues that have to do with party loyalty. Um, our constitution is clear, and I can oblige you a copy. It, it, it dictates that to contest election or even hold office uh, in the APC, you must be loyal to the party in every material particular. And from all she had said in the past, and even her comments and her general attitude uh, at the interview and so on, we, the NWC reviewed everything to it together, and we arrived at a conclusion that she doesn't possess the level of loyalty that the APC required to be able to contest election on our platform. Now, we may declare, if you recall, some of you who, you might recall that when you confronted me at the, at the villa uh, a day or two after some defection from APC to, to PDP, I said, APC may well benefit from these defections if it helps us <coughs> to be more critical in terms of who we give platform, you know, to, 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 to contest election and that there are core values, you know, that binds the APC together. We have a basis for our contract between the members. And those core values are non-negotiable. And I said, if there are people who have grievances that have to do with interpersonal relationship, communication gap, those we can resolve. But if, from our observation, your you can't fit into the core values of the APC, the, the, the basic ideology of APC, uh, then you cannot, you, you cannot, uh, you are not welcome. Um, the Electoral Act and even the APC Constitution, for example, forbid us from uh, anyone being a member of more than one political party at a time. You cannot, for example, be a member of APC and be a Kakari member of another party. But where you have a situation where it will appear, based on what you know and what I know, that someone is probably APC, you know, in the daytime, maybe for the purpose of uh, retaining certain offices, and they are PDP in heart, or not, if they are not PDP in heart, they are actually uh, simply a follower of a one-man uh, uh, presidential uh, permanent candidate, 
then we have a right to ask ourselves if this kind of attitude fits into those, those, those qualities and characteristics of an ideal member of uh, an all progressive Congress party. So th those are the reasons. We, we didn't want to have a lengthy explanation to do, but she knew why she was disqualified, and we know why she, we deny her the use of our platform. Now, now, I cannot, I've told you, I've told you we have about, in our, on our voter register, we have about 50 point, roughly 60 million registered members. Now, I can't say how many of these are going to participate in a, in a Sunday election. I mean, because to vote or to abstain from voting is voluntary. And uh, even with the general election, if you look at the total number of registered vote, voters uh, in the state, and you look at those who actually turn out to vote, even by INEC, I'm not sure we have scored 50% so far in any of the states. So whereas we have about uh, 60 million registered voters, I'm not able to speculate on how many people we vote. And like you also rightly pointed out, we, in obedience to the provisions of our constitution, uh, in some states we are going to do direct primaries, and in some other states we are going to do indirect based on their own local peculiarities and logistic challenges. And, and so uh, I can't tell you this is the number that are going to participate in either of the elections. Okay, please, uh, being the time constant, 